Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to Mentor Monday. Mentor Monday is your weekly microdose of encouragement, inspiration, and miracle grow on your potential as a coach. If you've never made it to a Mentor Monday, I want to welcome you. Um, for everybody else, they already know the drill. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. I'm interested in connecting with you. I know I don't have the opportunity to see your beautiful face or hear your voice or any of those other things, but you can do us a huge favor and you can comment, tell us where you're joining us from and what you're excited about, what you feel life and momentum on in your life. Also do us another huge favor, like this post and share it. That tells Facebook and it tells YouTube that we're doing a good job because we'd love to be out in front of as many people as we possibly can helping them. And so that just does us a really huge favor um, in getting that in front of people. Let me say hello to some people who are already saying hello to me. Um, Manal from Pennsylvania. Awesome. Uh, who else do I need to say hello to? Whoops. That's weird. Why did it put that on there? That was kind of strange. There's Manal from Pennsylvania. There's Carrie from Portland. Diane's joining us from South Carolina. Glad to be here. Glad to see you. Show Mir saying hello. Sandy is joining us from New Jersey. Jason's joining us from Northern Kentucky. Ebony's in the house. How's it going? Uh, Ebony, show Mir's joining us from Atlanta. Can't wait uh, to see what unfolds before our eyes tonight. Me too, huh? Uh, Joan's joining us from Bakersfield. Anybody else, if you are just making it into the room, we're just saying hello to everyone really quickly. And what we always want to do is we want to connect with you, interact with you. Uh, let me give you a heads up tomorrow. I'm doing a follow up to what I'm talking about tonight. So stay tuned for that uh, because you actually have to register for tomorrow because it's going to be tomorrow in Power Lunch at 10 a.m. Um, that's our free Facebook community that is for coaches. And if you actually look on my Facebook page right now, it's probably like right above this post right now. Um, it's actually the link there for you to be able to re register for the tools for resilience. So let me say hello to a few more people who are saying hello to me. Um, um, uh, Tamla from Dallas. Um, Bobby joining us from Atascadero. Uh, excited about making some good progress this week on a new ebook I'm writing. Thank you, Paul, for the product uh, blueprint. Cool. Harvey's joining us from South Florida. Always good. Oh, excited about new VIP client. Harvey's just crushing it. So thankful that all of the coaches that we've heard back from that live in the state of Florida, that we've heard back from, fared that storm really well. Um, and so I'm very appreciative of that. Bill joining us from Texas. We can all use more resilience. Absolutely. Very good. And that's what we're hoping to actually build. Uh, Kareen is uh, joining us from Arizona. Excited to continue working on my content calendar. Great. Anybody else like to say hello? You ha you're not too late. If you want to say hello really quickly before we jump in, that would be awesome. And also do us a huge favor. Like this post and share it, whether we are on YouTube and that's where you're watching us or on Facebook. Tells both of those platforms that we're doing a good job and it gets it out in front of more people. And there's Jennifer from Montana. Welcome, Jennifer. All right. Well, keep those comments rolling in. Oh, there's Michael who's joining us from Quebec. Welcome, Michael. Awesome. Hey, so, oh, more? Yes, more. Erica from Orlando. Welcome, Erica and Nikel from Salem, Oregon. Oregon is properly represented tonight. A few people from Oregon. That's awesome. Mary Kay's joining us from Toronto. Oh, Canada's trying to take over tonight, you guys. It's awesome. Very good. All right. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about really the five characteristics of successful coaches. Really what I'd said last week is it, if if I was going to boil it down to what makes a coach successful, the success factors that I see in a coach are really going to be the overflow of characteristics that I see inside of a coach. Really doesn't have anything to do with skills, smarts, intelligence, any of those other kinds of things that people think about really doesn't have anything to do with any of those things. When I see success in a coach, 
I can usually, it usually evidence itself pretty early on. And I see these five specific characteristics. Why am I doing this series right now about thriving as a coach? Well, well, it's obvious why I'm doing it because I care about you thriving as a coach. I'm not interested in just you getting trained and certified as a coach. It's not my end game. My end game is you thriving. And you thriving does not just mean that you're walking around and you're a little bit smarter and you pass an exam or that you went through some role playing or you got a nice gold sticker from someone or, or us or whatever. I'm, I'm less concerned about that. I'm concerned about, obviously, we've got an end game out in the world that we want to see people's lives transform. That's why we're in the business, ultimately. But I want your life to transform. Whatever is keep, whatever is holding you back right now that keeps you from thriving as a coach, it's probably things just like it that are keeping you from thriving in life. And so really, these five characteristics are also characteristics in a, th- uh, in a life that thrives. But all of this is about, I want you to crush it as a coach, but that also means that means that you're crushing it in life. Last week we talked about the passion for learning. This week, really, when it, if I had to if I had to pick any of the characteristics out of the five, and I can only pick one, and there's one that I wish that every coach that I ever trained had, because let me tell you this: I've been around coaching for quite a while. I was a student. I saw this evidenced in the people that I was alongside work, uh, working with, learning from. I could see some people who are actually better wired as a coach than I am. Because I'll tell you this, there are some people who just have a natural, you know, the, it seems like they're predisposed to being a good coach and being a good listener and all of these other things. Some of these things se- seem to come naturally. Some of them might have spent more hours learning or whatever. Let me tell you that I would choose a coach who had resilience over someone who had any of these other things seemingly going for them. Because what I can tell you in all of the years that I've been around coaching, both as a student, both as a coach, and the people that obviously that I have trained and coached, and the coaches that I've met from other programs, the number one, if I could choose one characteristic out of all of them that really separates the the successful coaches from the, from the ones who struggle or they quit, it's resilience. Bar none. There, there, there is the one characteristic that I would choose out of all of them. Um, I don't really, like if somebody comes in, I'll tell you this, somebody comes in and they're fundamentally challenged, like they are not naturally wired as a coach. I know that if they have resilience that they will absolutely get it at a certain point. I'm not really worried about it. When it, when it comes to that, they have resilience. I know that I'm absolutely going to see this person thrive and they're going to be really, really successful. So some of you may not be naturally resilient. And here's the thing is that you can learn to be, you can develop these things. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to overview what I see in, in resilience for coaches. I'm going to overview it tomorrow. I'm going to give you some tools during power lunch that'll help you do it. So tonight it's going to be the why and the, and the really looking at resilience from a coaching standpoint and what is resilience and the way that, that it's defined. And we look at it tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific. That's going to be noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to give you some tools for some of you who really need to develop that resiliency muscle in you. Now, let me give some credit where credit is due on the front end really quickly, because uh, I've at least been inspired by Angela Duckworth. She's the one who wrote the book, uh, Grip. That's her life's work. Um, I Stuff that I'm going to say tonight is not exactly, and it's not completely drawn, but I want to give her credit because she's definitely inspired some of the thoughts that I will share tonight. And she's got a TED Talk. I'd enjoy, uh, I would encourage you to watch her TED Talk, read her book, which is Grit, which is all about people developing uh, developing resilience and what that and what that actually looks uh, looks like for them and so just encourage you to look there so for us what is, what does it require to actually build resilience how can you begin to grow your resilience well here's the first thing that I would say is the first thing that I'd say is that you've got to find your passion because I'll tell you this it's easier to stay in the game if you're actually passionate passionate about what you're doing. And the other thing that I would say is that the passion for what you're doing, because I would say, generally speaking, coaches are passionate, 
But if there's some of you who are listening to me tonight that you're only thinking about coaching because you want to hustle a buck, because you know that the average coach is making $100, $150 an hour, you know, doing what they do, that they make great money, that they are free, that they have a free schedule, um, all of these other kinds of things. Because there's some people who want to get into a business and they want to get into a role or a job because they think that it's less work and I'm making better money. That's what I did when I was in college. I actually was pre-med and I got into a pretty prestigious program, um, you know, at a young age. And then when I got in and I started doing clinical work in the hospital, I was like, I really hate working with sick people. And I fortunately, I walked away from that program, but there was a lot of pressure because I had some family members who were in the medical field. And when I walked away from it, and especially from a family when we were really poor growing up, and when they saw me walking away, they thought, oh, Paul's giving up on his one opportunity to make something out of himself, make money, all of these other things. Did I not have what it took? There was all this pressure, but I walked away from it. You know why? Because it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the money to hate doing what you're doing every day. And so I'll say this, if there's anybody who's listening to me tonight that's thinking of getting into coaching because you just want to make money, listen, that's that's a recipe for disaster for your life. Listen, there are a million ways that you can make six figures. Find the thing that you're passionate about doing. Go build your business around the thing that you're passionate about doing. Because the people who have resilience, you're not going to have resilience. You're not going to want to show up. You're going to wash out if you're not passionate about coaching people. Successful coaches don't just do it for the money. They also don't just do it for any other reason that's out there. They don't just simply do it for their family. They don't just simply do it for other people. They don't do it for any reason except, well, what? Well, bigger things, you know? Coaches who have found a passion, uh, people who have found a passion for coaching, coaches coach because they're fascinated with people. They want to help them achieve their goals. And the other thing that I would say is, is that coaches who are in the game the longest, that are really successful, are not just coaching anybody. And they're not just coaching anything. I know you can come into coaching. You can just put a brand over you and call yourself a life coach. And you can coach anybody who's on the planet. I understand that. You don't even have to know about somebody's expertise or their background or any of those other things. I understand that. But if you're working with people that you don't like showing up and working with this, listen, when you not only start a business, but especially when you coach, you get to actually work with the people that you're most passionate about working with. Like I always ask our coaches, what are the kinds of people that motivate you? And what are the kinds of people that demotivate you that are like energy vampires? You know what? You shouldn't try to coach them. If you're in the game just for the money, there, sometimes you get lured into coaching people that you shouldn't coach. Or if you're into scarcity, you coach the wrong people. Listen, wh why I always tell our coaches to actually choose a niche is because you want because you need to be resilient in this business to be successful. And the way that you stay in the passion, in the love for what we do, is working for the working with the right people. And it's working with the stuff that you're actually interested in, the problems that you're interested in, the solutions that you really enjoy helping people. Uh, you know, because the thing is, is that, you know, for all the years that I've been a coach, no one's ever had to try to tell me to wake up in the morning. Never had trouble responding to an alarm clock. I've never had a, had a problem thinking about working or trying to motivate myself to work or whatever. There's definitely times when I've been more creative than other times and everything. And d definitely there's there was a couple of times that I got COVID and that had me down for a week or two or something like that. But but I couldn't wait to get back. This is what what it feels like to be in your lane. Have I dealt with setbacks? Have I dealt with challenges? Have I dealt with adversity as a business person, as a coach? Have I had difficult clients? Have I had struggles or any of those other things? Yeah, but you know what? They don't feel the same way because I'm actually doing something that I'm passionate about doing. And that makes all the difference. You know, what you have to do as a coach, if you're going to stay in for the long game and be successful, is that you've got to choose the people and the problems that you're actually passionate about working with. Here's the second thing that I would say. If you want to grow your resilience, then you've got to convict yourself 
of calling. And a lot of times people don't really hear that word. They don't usually use that word. But I really think that you need to have conviction in your life as a coach if you're going to be resilient. What do I mean by convict yourself of your calling? Coaches who are successful don't just see their role as a job. They don't just see their role as to paying the bills. They don't just see their role as to, well, I'm just going to try to uh, make up the difference between what I'm not making at my full-time job and and everything else. What they actually see is, is that their role is vital. And what what they really see is what I'm doing is not just a job and it's not something that I just got certified for. It's actually a calling. Because what I would say is, is that what really keeps you in the game is the that coaches who see the role as a moral imperative. And when I say moral imperative, it means that a coach really understands that if I don't live my calling, if I do not live my purpose, other people do not live their calling and do not live their purpose. That is the vital role that we play. We're catalysts. We're change agents. You know how many people right now are not happy about their life? If I can send you back a couple of weeks to watch what I talked about on Mentor Monday, most people, you're gonna, if you talk to most people, there's gonna be a higher likelihood that people do not like their life right now. Then there's gonna be more people who do not like their life, the station of their life, various things, but overall they do not like their life compared to compared to the people who really do love their life. We're talking about people who just don't even like their life. There's, there's not that many people who really even like their life. There's very few people who really love their life. And so what we have to understand is, is that when there's conviction in your heart, when there's a moral imperative, I look at people and I see their potential. I see their purpose. And I say, when I hear people say, well, I don't have anything to live for. I have no purpose in my life. I have no meaning. I don't know what I'm here on the planet to do. There's something that rises up in me. Let me ask you this. Right now, as a coach, is there something that rises up in you that you don't tolerate that people don't love their lives? There should be there should be something that grates against you. Like you should not be okay with people tolerating their lives or the way that it that that it is right now. Like most people are not living into their potential. We have to understand that. We have to actually believe that. We have to believe that we see something more in people and that people have a, a higher creative purpose than what they're living in, most cases. And so what I would say in all of this is that when there's a conviction in you of your calling, that there's a purpose that you are actually here for, then you know what? You stay in the game. Setbacks don't really matter to you so much. Adversity doesn't matter because when you know that what you're here fighting for, what you know what you're in the trenches for. Listen, if you don't know what you're in the trenches for, you will wash out. Some of you who have been who have been thinking a little bit about like, well, you know, this thing hasn't been as easy as I as I thought it was going to be. Maybe I'm starting to wash out. You better start connecting yourself with your calling and your passion. Like you need to remind yourself. Some of you tonight, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and you need to convict yourself of your calling again. You need to fan the flames on it all over again. And that's your responsibility because there are lives where people are not going to live into their potential. The high water mark that you we're meant to help raise for other people. This is not just a job. Think about it for your kids. Think about it for your family. Think about it for their future. See, the only thing that ever has kept me in the game for anything is that I knew that there was something bigger than the adversity. It, you know what? It has to have a greater purpose than the pain. The pain has to have a purpose behind it. Anyone who does not have an end game, a meaningful purpose at the end is going to wash out because why? Because then you're going to start asking yourself, why am I even doing this? Why does this even matter? I've never asked that question about my job in all the years that I've been a coach. Because I understand it. There is a moral imperative about what I do. When I listen for coaches, you do not tie your shoes the same way as someone who does not know their purpose. There are people who have menial labor jobs. There are people who are paying, getting paid by the hour. They're living by an hourly wage and they're exchanging time for money. You tie your shoes in the morning in a different way than those people. I'm calling you out, coaches. If you've lost your passion, you're going to have to fan the flames on it. Remind yourself of why you're doing this thing. Your why is, this is what is the, 
differentiating mark between a coach and what some other somebody else does in, in just choosing a job that's out there because it's going to pay the bills because it's it's a it's a thing that they saw on posted on indeed.com or on some resume website or or in the one ads or the classified somewhere else that's not what what we do we show up because there's a reason behind what we're doing number 3 is this number 3 if it's not obvious, is that you've got to believe you can do it. And, and I'll remind you of this. Listen, self-doubt is normal. It's a, I'd say 99% of coaches that come in that I talk to have self-doubt. It's normal. The difference is, is that if you have a fixed mindset coupled with self-doubt, it will be crippling and it will completely neutralize your chance of success. What we have to understand is that is that this believing you can do it is not just simply a mantra like, well, I believe what we're talking about really here is meaning. As I've taught our coaches in advanced skills training and I'm sure other places, is that belief is all about how we construct meaning around anything that happens. Every circumstance, every difficulty, every challenge, every relationship, literally everything that you have in your life right now, any belief that you've formed is essentially a meaning by whatever circumstance that you find it in. And what I would say is, is that coaches who flourish, the coaches who are really successful, is that it wasn't just, oh, I believe I can do it and I'm, I'm trying to pump myself, up, pump myself up. What we're really understanding is that the mindset is not fixed. It means that the meaning that they have constructed about any any kind of adversity, any kind of difficulty, any kind of setback is not limiting them. It's not creating a ceiling. Let me help you understand what the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset is. An example of a fixed mindset is procrastination. Some of you right now are not living in a growth mindset and it's going to hamper you. It's going to it's going to it's going to be your Achilles heel. Because some of you are avoiding difficult tasks. Some of you right now are avoiding failure. And you know what that's going to be a sure sign of? Failure is coming in the future. If you're trying to avoid stuff, it's because you have a fixed mindset. There's a belief. There's a meaning about whatever is going on. I understand that sometimes we have tasks that we're not really crazy about doing as coaches. I understand that. Like, I'm not interested in the business side of things. I just want to help people. Well, you're still going to have to do some business tasks. There's going to be some administration. I understand that there's certain tasks and different things that I didn't really enjoy doing, but avoiding it was going to be a sure sign that failure was imminent for me. Another example of a fixed mindset, it, again, it's the, it's the meaning around difficult tasks. It's the meaning around what has happened to you. What do you do when you have a setback? Is your natural inclination is to give up? Well, I guess this just isn't for me. You know, I did a, I did, I, I pre-qualified this person and then I had, uh, I had a discovery session with them. I had a complimentary coaching session and then they didn't want to sign the contract. They didn't want to sign an agreement. They kept me hanging over there. I guess this just isn't for me. I guess no one wants to pay for coaching. I guess no one wants to pay me for coaching. What are we doing? Is it we're creating meaning around a circumstance and you know what you're going to do? you're going to wash out. You're going to quit because what you have is a fixed mindset. It's probably what you came in believing. How many of you right now are working in your business with the same self-doubt that you started with? You're going to be crippled by it unless you change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Some of you see failure as the limit of your ability. And so if you're if you're seeing a failure, like with, hey, I went, went through the process and someone didn't sign the coaching agreement at the end of it, and you think that that's on you, and you think that that's a limit of your ability, it's a limit of your coaching ability or your business ability or your sales ability or whatever, you know what? You're going to quit. I know that. It's predictable. I watch it in coaches. I've watched it for years. You wouldn't believe all the coaches who are into personal growth and development for everybody else, but they have a fixed mindset about themselves. They have very little grace and mercy for themselves. And that's got to change. Some coaches, and I listen to the things that they say, because I will say this, where self-doubt is alive is that you're going to see a bunch of navel-gazing. 
There's a lot of navel gazing in the coaching industry. I'm not trying to knock our industry. I'm talking about an inherent problem with people who come into our industry. And so you know what they do? So they just brandish credentials as though it's a badge of honor, as though they're more successful than someone else. And you know what? That doesn't mean that you're thriving in life because you pass an exam, because you passed a credential course or anything else, because you heard me talking for hours upon hours is not, is not your badge of honor. It really isn't. See, what ends up happening, because I know that self-doubt creeps in, and I also see how uh, people struggle with these kinds of things, and they don't have real resilience, and they actually are coaches with a fixed mindset, because what they end up doing, why people navel gaze, is because they're actually jealous of other people. Because they have self-doubt, what they end up doing is that they see the success of other people. And you know what they say? Because I've had this said. Let's just talk about this for a second. What is the dividing line and what I really believe is the separating line between life coach training, and, and I'm not trying to sell us, but when people ask us a question, what's the difference between you guys and everybody else? One thing that I always say, and I say this as an encouragement, you can learn coaching from literally anybody, from books, from videos, free videos. There's great, great programs. If you pay $500 for one, if you pay $2,000 or $10,000, you're going to learn coaching from people. The difference is, is that our coaches, we go to work against the self-doubt and the crippling, limiting beliefs uh, that are keeping our coaches from being able to move forward because it does matter that you're successful in business. And I've heard some people in our industry get offended when I talk about our coaches being successful. When I talk about our coaches coming into financial success and everything else, when I did that series a couple of months ago about bad money beliefs that keep you broke, I had coaches that reached out to me. It's not about the money. I can't believe that you would talk about money. I can't believe that you would. No, you know, it's not about the money. We're talking about things that limit people. And see what, when somebody starts arguing with me about the success of our students, and it's a coach that's been trained and certified or somebody who's training other people and they argue about some of those success factors that I look, look at in life. You know what I know what it is? It's that when, when there's self-doubt, when there's a fixed mindset, then the success of other people starts to offend. That's what we're talking about. If the success of other coaches offends you, if the success of other coaches makes you feel like you're lesser then we are we have a problem with a fixed mindset. Say this as well. Working hard at something means I'm not good at it. Let me help you understand this. Is that if it's taking you a little while to under, understand certain concepts, to drive things home, to build your muscle, it, uh, if you believe that working hard at something means that you're not good, that you're not a natural, listen, I'll say this. I was not a natural coach. I had some trainers tell me that. I, I was. I was told in a coach training event in front of everyone that I was not a coach, that I was not a natural. How do you think that that made me feel? Well, I don't know. I don't know what the success rate of any of those other people were that I was with that day. I know one person that day that I've kept track of of all of these years and maybe two people out of that, uh, out of all of that. But you know what? I'm here. I'm standing. I'm not still in the business. I'm actually coaching other coaches and I'm training other coaches. So the reality was is that I could have walked away and said, you know what? You're right. Maybe I should do something else. Maybe consulting or public speaking is my gig, except that you know what? I know that I knew that I wasn't a natural. I knew that it didn't come naturally, but I had the passion. I had the conviction. I knew what I was called to do. So this is the way that we have to look at these things because adversity and difficulty doesn't mean that you're not supposed to show up. Let me help you understand. Is that anyone who was born on this planet, you know, let's say somebody is great at math and you say, well, I'm not very good at math. Well, that's bogus. The people who are good at math yeah, maybe they have a natural inclination, but you know what they still had to put in? They still had to put in the effort. They still had to learn. You don't come out of the crib knowing how to do two plus two or, or algebra or anything else. You might have had some a predisposition towards being skilled at math, but you still had to put in the effort. And for those of us who are like, well, I'm just not good at math. Well, maybe you haven't been taught it in the way 
that you need to be taught. Maybe you gave up. Maybe you just said one day, I'm not good at math, so you didn't apply yourself. Maybe it wasn't your passion. Maybe it wasn't your wheelhouse. But don't say that you're not good at something. Say, well, you know what? I chose other things in my life. I was passionate about other things in my life. I hated numbers. I hated whatever. And I'm going to go do the thing that I'm actually created for. That's great. But don't make a blanket statement that you're not good at something because we're just talking about developing a skill that can come with learning. Here's what a growth mindset looks like, and here's how it compares to what we were just talking about a while ago. It's saying something like, I can grow. You know what that means? Is that we understand that anything that we haven't learned is just about developing ourselves. It's like if somebody tells you, well, I don't have muscles. Well, you do have muscles. You may not have developed them. They may not be strong. They may not be big. They might even not even be flexible. But all of those things we've learned over time can be changed. I'm learning right now to, to be more flexible and to open up my hips so that I don't have all this tightness that's following me for the rest of my life. My whole life, I've been tight naturally. Meanwhile, I've got my daughter who's the flexibility queen. And she can do all kinds of crazy stuff and everything else. Naturally, right? Well, you know what? I can discipline, I can teach, I can develop my body into anything that I want. And if you want to be sedentary, like I'm, that's the thing. If I want to be sedentary, I can just sit in a chair all day. And you know what? Your body will do what you teach it to do. But if, uh, and so even in that is growing and it's developing around what you want. What we have to understand is that, is that it's all a matter of what we choose and we can choose to grow. We can choose to believe, and this is what we're talking about. A while ago, we we're talking about a fixed mindset that's around a creating meaning around things. And to just say, I can grow, the meaning around that changes everything. I can even say one thing as evidence of this. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. For those of you who have self-doubt, you don't think that you're good enough. You don't think that you've lived a life great enough yet or whatever. That's a sign of a fixed mindset. What do we need to do? We need to give ourselves credit. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. I can tell you one thing. The coaches that I that we've been around in Jumpstart over the last like month, three, three months, six months, or whatever, you wouldn't believe the transformation, the confidence, you know, where they've where they've come in a really short period of time. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from a growth mindset. And all of us can really say, if we really have a growth mindset, if we're giving ourselves half the credit, is that I'm not the same person I was yesterday. I'm not the same person I was a year ago, six months ago, or a month ago. There's, and this is what we've got to do, is that growth mindset understands that there is progress that we're actually after. See, what we can also say in this is that I can try another strategy. It means that I can look at difficulty and I can look at setbacks and I choose to frame it in a different way. I can choose another strategy. I can say I'm afraid, unafraid to put the work in. I'm not going to avoid the hard stuff that really doesn't develop me. You know, when you go to the gym, you lift the same weight every day. Doesn't really do anything after a certain point. Might be able to maintain, but you're not going to change. Really requires putting some more weight on. It requires changing the strategy up. It also means that you've got to actually put the work in because the first time you go in the gym and you really put a workout in, you're usually in pain so bad that you're like, man, I don't know if I could ever do that again. After you get in and you see the growth, you see the development, you start to taste the fruit of it. People start noticing. You feel better. You're more energized or whatever. Now you start to look for the pain because you've connected the pain with what you want. Not the pain and making it push you back and hold you back. That's how we understand it. A growth mindset understands that. Instead of practice makes perfect, we say practice makes improvement. We understand what we're measuring. What are we talking about? The, the measuring stick, the meaning that we get around what we're doing. I'm not into perfection. Perfection's a myth. You're never going to be a perfect coach, especially starting out. You're going to slip into counseling. You're going to slip into advising. You're going to have some sessions that were, were stinkers that you're like, man, do I, have, do I have what it takes? Man, that was a stinker. Is that person going to fire me? Are they even going to come back? Are they going to get any results or whatever? I understood what that felt like. You know what that meant? That first day, I was kind of in regret for the first 
X amount of hours. And then I went home and I said, how can I keep that from happening with this client again? And it always made me better. I wish success always made you better and improved you. It just really doesn't. What really helps you succeed is actually the adversity. You know, like for me, I was thinking earlier today when, uh, when I was in high school, we were poor and I played on a basketball team uh, on our high school. Now, I was a different kind of poor. I was country poor. Country poor out in the out in the farmland. There's houses not near each other. Everybody's poor that's out there. Uh, you didn't see a whole lot of people. You know, uh, you were kind of alone a lot. And there's a cheap fiberglass basketball goal that I would shoot on. And I would I would pretend that I was Michael Jordan and I'd try to watch as much sports as I could on our terrible antenna that got three channels. And two two of those would would be fuzzy most of the time. You know, you're trying to make out those things. And that was my life. And But I was playing on this team, and I wasn't that bad. I was actually a pretty decent shooter if no one was near me because I'd been sitting around on my fiberglass goal shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting by myself, because I, but I wasn't really getting better. But there was a guy on our team who was amazing. And I remember he played one year with us, and he was like, I just can't do this. Like, these guys... Uh, we could be so much better and everything else. So he brings me into town to play, but not just into town. He brings me into a part of the town that I didn't really, I'd never even been in because I hardly ever went to town, but I went to town and it was a different kind of poor over there. But even though those people were poor, I will say this is that they had passion and they had pride. And when I went out there for the entire summer with him, and he would look out for me, but everybody dogged me out. I could barely get a shot off. I was too, you know, I'd been shooting by myself forever. I wanted a lazy jump shot and people would foul you, but you didn't call fouls on people because then you would look weak. And for the entire summer, I would go home and I'd hardly score any points and I would have cuts on me. I'd be bleeding. Um, I'd be a mess, but I would keep going out there. And you know what started happening at the end of the summer? I got to where I could get some shots off and faster. I was shooting faster. I was getting passes off. I actually started earning some respect by the end of the summer because as much as I got the ball shoved down my throat, Paul kept showing up with his friend. And you know what happened when the, when the season rolled around? Season was a breeze because I got out there and whenever I got even kind of like a touch foul, I could still hit the shot and they would also give me the and one. And one, which is you get fouled on the shot and now you get a free throw after it. And, and I'd and, and I'd been playing with faster players. I've been playing with grown men. And now I'm out there playing with teenagers. And it was a completely different game. I was faster. I wasn't afraid. I had confidence. You know why? Because practice makes improvement. It didn't look like there was much improvement going on, but it made but it created a resilience. It created a grit in me that I didn't have before. This is what we're really talking about. The success of others. See, what we have to understand is, is that the success of others proves that it's possible. See, a coach with a fixed mindset is saying stuff like, oh, well, Paul, you shouldn't be talking about money and about people getting clients. It's all about this, that, or the other. No, it's about, every, it's about everything. It's about thriving completely in your life that your soul completely prospers. It means that your family prospers with you. All of those things. But see, when you see success of other coaches, it should actually inspire you and show you what's possible. When you see somebody get a big piece of the pie, it does not mean that there's less pie for you. It means that there's a lot of pie. It means that there's a lot of people who are out there who need help and they're showing you. Listen, if somebody went before you and cut a path, that's amazing. That means that it should inspire you that it's possible for you as well. Last thing that I would say about a growth mindset is that it go, harkens back to calling. When you say my calling is worth the effort, you will stay in the game because what's keeping you there is not just the money. My calling means that I'm going to put everything that I've got into this thing to make it happen. Here's the last thing that I want to give you. Last thing I'm going to give you is that you need to surround yourself with a community of like-minded because resilience is not about being the Lone Ranger. I haven't met a coach yet that was successful being by themselves. You know, for some of you, you're too young to remember what the Lone Ranger was. Some of us are a little bit older. Uh, I think it was like on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings, they would show 
the Lone Ranger. In the episodes that I always saw, I don't know that they ever made color ones. I only saw black and white ones. And the Lone Ranger was never actually alone. He had a, a close assistant, a person who was next to him, someone who was like-minded, who shared in his adventures and adversity and everything else. Does everybody know what that guy's name was? His name was Tonto. So even the Lone Ranger wasn't actually alone. What is true, though, right now is that some of you guys need to, some of your colleagues, some of your associates, some of your friends, some of your family members are not like-minded with you. And you know what that means? Is it means that when there's adversity, that those people are going to say, well, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you need to do something else. Maybe this isn't what you're cracked up, what it's cracked up to be. Maybe the coaching thing isn't your gig. Maybe it's not something that you can make money at, but only other certain other kinds of people can make money at. Whatever. Those are the kinds of voices that you're going to hear. See, what you have to understand is that the culture you are in is more powerful than your in individual influence. I, I, I mean it like this. What does that mean? Your culture is more powerful than your individual influence. If I'm, if, let's imagine you're a pot of spaghetti. And we just cooked you up. We just cooked you up and took you off the stove. It's just barely, you know, you take it off of the boil and it's just like, it's just like there. But I take you in the pot and I put you in the refrigerator and I come back to visit you 30 minutes later, an hour later, three hours later. Here's what's true is that your individual influence is not going to change the temperature of that refrigerator for very long, maybe a little bit. Maybe you'll drop it, you know, you'll change the temperature by about a degree or two degrees for a little while. But it's only a matter of time before the culture of the refrigerator actually changes you and you became the same temperature as everyone else, everything else. Do you get what I'm saying here? Is that you've got to surround yourself by people who have a passion for the same things that you want. See, it means that you need to participate in a community of people who are passionate who are called. See, what we have to understand is, is that I don't want to just be around people who are passionate. I need people who have conviction. I need people who understand that what they are doing is not just some passing fad. Coaching is not a fad. It's a calling. And the people that I understand, even our jumpstart program, are people, this isn't just a fad. It's not just a trend. It's not just a title. It's not just something that's cool that people are making money at. It's that the people who are in our program actually understand that they are called, that there is a moral imperative. See, when you get around people who have passion and a conviction, they're not going to just allow you to just wash out. They're not going to allow you to make your excuses and run away from what's hard. What you have to be around is a community of people, because you know what happens is that some days you are a little bit colder than everybody else. And the culture actually warms you up because the culture changes you. It also means that sometimes you come in red hot and you know what? You infuse and you help fan the flames on everyone else. This is what we actually get in the culture of coaching community. It's not true everywhere. It's true inside of our community, I can say for sure. So what we're talking about is being around people who are passionate, who are called, who have high belief. And you know what we do is that we celebrate the success and we celebrate the setbacks, both of those things. I'm not going to just celebrate when you succeed. I'm going to celebrate the fact that you attempted something that was really difficult. And even in spite of the setback, you're actually learning something because that's what resilience is all about, is that it's the learning that is uh, uh, that uh, that allows you to come back. You've got to get around gritty people for that to start forming in you. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we'll be having power lunch. I'm going to be sharing some tools to build resilience. It's going to be free. Um, if you go on my Facebook page right now, the link to the Zoom is on there, and I'll try to throw it in the comments as well. If you're on our email list, you'll get an email about that, and you can register. For those of you who have not gotten trained and certified as a coach, you heard me talking about all of these things of growth and development and learning and community. That's what we've tried to throw all of these things together in Jumpstart. When we created Jumpstart, it was, it was three things that we wanted to put in place to help you succeed. Training that was affordable, that was not just training though, is that we wanted to give you the tools, an A to Z business development roadmap so that you, you could succeed. Build your coaching practice around you authentically, that you could look in the mirror and say, this is my coaching practice and I'm successful in it being who I am. 
We give you all the tools in that. But we also wanted to have a community of support. where We have a live group coaching call every Wednesday where we give feedback on what people are working on. You can ask any question that you want. And we celebrate success. And you know what? We celebrate the set setbacks as well. Because we see all of those things. We celebrate your growth, your development, everything else. And we make it in bite-sized chunks that are really simple that really anybody can really implement. But showing you how to bring out the best in you so that you can go out there and you can serve as many people as possible. How can I maximize your ability and help you serve as many people as possible while also filling some of the goals and some of the ambitions in your heart, some of your dreams financially and everything else. That's what our Jumpstart program is really about. Jumpstart includes, among other things, Tuesday live training. Um, that's 5 p.m. It's 7 p.m. Uh, Central. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. And all of those rolling sessions that we're actually including in Tuesday night tr uh, training are all of these things. They're the core modules of the Live Coach Certification course. Yes, you can go through all of this stuff self-paced, but you know what? What we want to do is that we want to make sure that you have support, but we also want you to be connected in community with other people. And that happens. We have live Q&As. There's coaching, role playing. All of those things actually happen in those uh, in those Tuesday nights. But we also have a weekend live coaching boot camp. I know some of you aren't available on a Tuesday. You'd like to knock everything out in a single weekend. We've made an entire live weekend available for you, October 28th through 30th. There's seven sessions with Q&As and role-playing, you can get trained and certified in a single weekend, and you can earn your uh, earn your credential, and you also get a free listing on lifecoachmatch.com. We also have a thing called Brand Camp for Coaches. And what is in Brand Camp? Well, it's 13 hours of training that show you the step-by-step, -step, how do you develop your marketing messaging? How, where does branding come from? What we want you to be able to do is to help you choose your niche and also develop powerful messaging tools that if somebody comes on your website, they can see it's a, if this is a really good fit. It brings someone closer to becoming a client. And so we do all of those things from website development to search engine optimization to how do you write an email? How do you write a sales page? All of these things are actually included. Coaching funnels, all of those things are actually included in BrandCamp. In our coaching product launch blueprint, what I'm saying is this a lot? Yeah. There's seven total courses that are now available inside of our uh, of our Jumpstart program that you have instant access to. It's about a 90 second enrollment. You get access to all these things. Eight sessions that are 10 hours worth of walkthrough to bring you from zero, like just, you don't even have an idea. We help you brainstorm all the way to creating a product launch, an actual product and a launch, a sequence, a 14-day sequence we actually give you with funnels and how do you post on social media, create emails, all of that stuff is actually included in the coaching product launch blueprint. All of these things that we're showing you, I know what the value is. We're talking about over $10,000. We're talking about other programs who are doing the same kind of thing. Most of them are only giving you certification for two to $10,000. We're doing everything, training, certification, business development roadmap, all of these tools, the support that you need, live training, live connections in a group call every Wednesday and an amazing community of people. It's invaluable. I wish I would have had this. I would have been successful a lot faster if I would have had these. And this is what it's really about. It's about giving you the tools so that you can get launched quickly and not make the mistakes and not flounder. Like I understand some of you are coming from other programs that I'm talking to right now. You get certified. This happens all the time. Get certified through another program. You're you're poor from it now, and you don't have clients. It's okay. It's ninety seven dollars a month. This is not going to break the bank. It's three dollars and twenty five cents a day. That's buying Starbucks every day. Keep us for as long as you need us, but we want to help you thrive. We want to see you succeed. And so that link is inside of the description of this video right now. And you can get enrolled in ninety seconds, and you can be a part of that. Okay, that was a lot. Let me say hello to everyone. Oh, Rock says they're going to be at uh, at Power Lunch. So good. Uh, Shomir says, um, Paul is so humble, but I'm one of his number one advocates because this tr truly is his calling. And if it's yours, he will help you embody it 100%. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. What else? Hey, to W. Brewer. There's Harvey says, it'll work. It, it works if you commit. That's so awesome. Um, Harvey says, jumpstart 
is the family in training. So good. Uh, Shomir says, uh, yes, join if you haven't already. Lynn says, thanks for your passion, Paul. It's infectious. Thank you. Rock says they do not know who the uh, who the Lone Ranger is. Well, Google it. Lynn knew who Tonto was. We'll give Lynn a gold star tonight since she uh, she knew. <laughs> uh, Harvey says, Paul is the best. Paul woke me up. I appreciate that, Harvey. You're a sweetheart. So awesome. Um, oh, and Harvey is saying, watch the Angela Duckworth video on YouTube. Yeah. It's really, really good. Uh, Teresa says, uh, Paul is the best coach trainer I've seen. Thank you. I appreciate that. So humbling. Um, Rock says, I was researching several life coaching training programs and I chose LCDI because I watched Paul in action. Amazing fellow. Thank you, Rock. Appreciate that. Um, let's see who else do I need to say hello to. Hey, there's Benita. Hey, how's it going, Benita? There's Tara. Hey, Tara from, uh, from Las Vegas. Oh, and Lynn's got a good uh, celebration. She's been posting on Facebook for, the, for a month and a half and beginning to see the laying of a strong foundation towards my calling. People are really responsive, and it's so exciting. So good. Samantha's talking about her calling in this. Matters to me because I do not want people to be stuck and I want people to be able to move forward. That's awesome. So good. Mary Kay says it's so a calling. Awesome. Hey, there's Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. There's Tasha from St. Louis. How's it going? Oh, it's Taisha. I'm sorry. I didn't read it right. Um, let's see. Who else do I need to say hello to really quick? Um, and Brewer says I'm doing boot camp. I can't wait. That's so good. Awesome. Sandy says post posted to do my social media page. You're helping me let go of the crutches. So good. Awesome. Oh, uh, Rock. There is um on the life coach certification course. Now there is Tuesday night training, so you'll have access to all of those things, which is awesome. Erica says, I feel like I've been coaching those around me. And when I told my friend I was interested in this course, they asked, will I start charging? <laughs> Did you tell them yes? That's the right answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, very cool. Well, listen, everybody, I appreciate you guys all immensely. Let me just remind you that tomorrow you can get us at 10 in the morning. Uh, I should have put one more slide in, right? Uh, tomorrow is this power lunch. It's 10 a.m. You do need to register because it's on Zoom, but it will stream to the Facebook group called Power Lunch. So all you need to do on my Facebook page right now, uh, facebook.com slash Paul Dabdu. Not like most people can spell Paul Dabdu, but that's how you spell it. D-A-B-D-O-U-B. -B -B. There you go. So you can go in there and then you can register. We will, for those of you who are on the email list, we'll send that email reminder out. But you do have to register to be able to join Zoom. Power Lunch has a little bit different look and feel. It's a little bit more casual. And we're going to walk through some of the tools tomorrow to help you personally with resilience. I know for some of you that's uh, that you'd, you'd like to build some resilience. We're going to give you tools for that. Also some tools that you can help other people. Uh, with the same things. So you can definitely use those for that. So listen, I appreciate you guys all immensely. Have a great rest of your week and take care.